uh, this will be a video in English this time, uh, at least I will try speaking English, uh, on how to make the cooling of a Titan unit from KNC Minor better. Uh, this is a patch 2 unit, which means that the fan is thermal. So I will also change the fan to a new one, that is much better. Okay, so this is one of the cubes. Uh, the batch 2 comes with 5 cubes, the batch 1 comes with 4 cubes. Uh, the batch 1 was uh, uh, installed with a, a fairly good um, fan. But the batch 2 it's a terrible fan, so, so we'll replace it with one that is much better. Let's start by unscrewing the six uh, screws, two in the top, two on the right and two on the left. That is holding it all together. Sometimes these uh, screws, they are just uh, rotating or spinning without actually coming out. And you can just use an ordinary flat screwdriver. Try to push it between those metal and, and give it um, some pressure while you unscrew it. That usually helps to, to make the screw come out. Um, this is one of them. It uh, has an issue of, of not coming out. So I'll just take an ordinary flat screwdriver and push it downwards so that it adds some pressure. And voila! Okay, I can now take off the chassis. It's just a piece of metal, so it goes off like that. Um, the sides of this chassis or unit can uh, can just be bent like this to get a better overview and to be able to work inside. Uh, I usually take away the dust uh, using some air pressure pressure air I don't know what you call that in English but anyhow you probably understand so uh, it will make some sound okay uh, I will actually not replace the fan now but I will take this one away so it becomes easier to see what I'm doing um, it's just mounted with uh, four screws that is also holding this uh, grill or whatever uh, in place. Actually, now when I when I look at this fan, uh, this is this is actually not the. Um, the fan that usually comes with a batch 2 unit, so I wonder if this this fan has the KNC brand, uh, that's usually the one from batch 1. I can show you how the batch 2 fans look like. Uh, it's usually something like this with only two pin connector. So I'm not sure why, if it was from KNC or if it's uh, actually not the uh, original batch 2 unit, I don't know. We have the heatsink mounted with three screws, two on that side, one on this side. Uh, I'll just use, uh, by the way, this is a Torx 10 and for the fan uh, mounting uh, it's a Torx 20. Those are the only two I think you need. three screws are away. Uh, I hope you can see this but uh, this metal plate here can now be taken away carefully. I'm just pushing it upwards but slowly and carefully so that the okay, DC DC converters will not follow, will not pop out. It has never happened to me but, but I heard 
someone said that if you use too much force you can actually happen to get one of these DC DC connectors to uh, converters to pop out of the socket okay so this is uh, how it's made from KNC miner uh, the heat from the DC DC converters are taken through these uh, thermal pads or whatever uh, they are called uh, over to the metal sink that, that takes the heat to the heat sink to the actual heat sink through the heat pipes um, and especially the ones that are on these sides it's too far away from from the fan uh, and also to make the heat go all the way through the metal and into the heat pipes and it's just too far away uh, so it becomes too hot on these places so what we'll do is first we'll take away these thermal pads whatever they are called and what I'll do is that I will cut here and here you will probably not see when I'm doing it but, uh, uh, but I'm just using a let me show you how it looks like I'm just using a ordinary I, I have no idea what you call this so uh, at least you can see what it is uh, I'll just cut it and we'll get back uh, I didn't mention after cutting uh, use uh, this kind of tool to make sure there is no pieces of metal remaining on the side so just clean it up with with this one Now half, half work is done uh, with the cutting, uh, I, I cut this side and now I just cut in the same way on the other side. This is how it looks when it's done, like a T. Please remember which side was up and down. You can see the traces of the uh, thermal pads or whatever. So I'll just clean this one up with a piece of paper. And this is a kind of a, it's called IPA clean. I don't know what it is, but it's a pure alcohol for cleaning electronics and things that are sensitive it's good because it, it goes away directly so I'm just using it to clean uh, we only need to use uh, two of the thermal pads so I'm, I'm, I'm taking away the one that looks most messy and keeping these two what I'll do with these two is that I will cut them uh, I will take away a small piece of this just like something like that to throw away uh, it's because you don't need all of it and, and uh, by taking away a piece of it you will enable more air to flow uh, into the cooling okay I'm not sure if I make sense, but maybe you can write a comment if you don't understand something I'm saying. These ones is definitely from a batch 1 unit, so this cube is not from a batch 2 that it was supposed to be. Um, I'm trying to put them back and I'm putting them back in the reverse direction. You can see here the traces of where the where these DC DC converters have been they have made some trace here so I'm just swapping uh, swapping them and putting them in the other direction to make a better pressure but actually this doesn't want to get stuck again uh, if you look on as you have seen I've done a few of these 
they are kind of different. This is a batch two. Uh, they are still very fresh uh, compared to the batch ones that are somehow stiff and, and dried out. So the dried out ones, like the one I'm trying to put back here, is, is sometimes just um, not uh, stuck in. So what you can do uh, is that you put them instead on top of the DC-DC converters and then put the metal on top of it. So uh, the idea is that they are supposed to, to stick, but you see it has uh, some issues when it, it gets old and dried out. Okay, let's leave this for, for now and continue instead with the heat sink. Uh, the heat sink is now loose, it's just uh, this metal that was keeping it in place. So it's just a. Okay, there it comes. And there you can see the remainings of the, the grease, the thermal paste. Uh, and we'll clean clean that uh, first of all. Use some paper. This one this doesn't look that much dried out, so it's probably simple to to get it out, get it away. You can also use some sharp thing to get. The remainings that are stuck between the heat pipes. If you want to get that away, you can just use something sharp between like this. And usually I always end up with, with some of the cleaning solution there, the alcohol, just to get the last pieces out. Now it starts to look clean. Okay, so that one is clean. Next thing is to clean also the ASIC chip. So I just use some paper, take away the old thermal paste. And in this case, actually, it was not that dried out. Uh, and uh, Therefore, I could get almost everything away just with a piece of paper. So you can just use it to, to take away if there's any dried out thermal paste. But if possible, just take it away with paper and end with some of this alcohol as usual. Um, another thing we should clean is these four DC DC converters because I will put new heat sink, uh, separate heat sinks on them. Uh, those are the ones that was covered with the uh, pieces of metal that I took away. So instead of that, uh, I'll use uh, separate heat sinks and to make them s stick to this yellow surface, uh, I have to clean it because this one adds some kind of grease. It makes it hard to uh, fasten the, the new heat sinks if you don't take it away first. Just clean them a bit like this. Now this is, is uh, ready. Okay, so that's how it looks like when it's totally cleaned out. What we'll do now is we'll put new thermal paste, we'll put uh, separate uh, heat sinks on these four, we'll put a new fan and then mount it back together. 
So let's start with the thermal paste. I'm using a GC Extreme. Uh, I used, uh, I looked on the web and compared different brands, and this one showed up to be the best one. Uh, I have another one that I haven't tried yet, but it's supposed to be also uh, a good one. It's called uh, Thermal Grizzly Cry Cryonaut. I don't know how you're supposed to say Cry Cryonaut. Cryonaut or something. That one is also supposed to be a good one. But I'm uh, using this GC Extreme from Gelid Solutions. This one is actually almost empty, so I'll, I'll finish this one and start the next one. I like the way this is uh, delivered in a small can uh, with a, uh, like a small spoon to, to apply the thermal grease instead of the traditional syringe or what you call it. So I just start um, trying to, to divide it on the whole surface. This is somehow time consuming, not very funny to look at, but I want it to be as even as possible spread out and it's not enough, I think. So I have to open a new one. Uh, they're somewhat expensive, but on the other hand, compared to how much you have to pay for a Titan unit, it's not worth mentioning, but uh, maybe $30 or 30 or 40 US dollar, somewhere there. Actually, you should use quite a lot because in this case the, the heat pipes that you are putting on top of this thermal paste it's it's not uh, even surface it's uh, some of the thermal paste will just go between the uh, the heat pipes so that's why you have to add some extra to make sure it will still remain some of, of this. Uh, talking English while doing something is not is really not that simple. <laughs> not for me at least. It was a lot easier speaking Swedish. Uh, okay, and finally on this side. Now it's look starting to look good. It's evenly spread out. Don't need the last piece of it. So it looks like this now. Next is to put uh, heat sinks, uh, four of them, uh, and the original packing that I use looks like this. It's from uh, Swift Tech uh, and Swift Tech BGA, uh, BGA memory ROM sinks. I will put it in the description as well. Um, I have also bought another one that is very similar in size and, and weight from Ensotec BMRC1 memory ROM sync. I'll put also this one in the description. Um, I haven't tried that one yet, but it's supposed to be very similar to this. So you just take away the protection and then you yes, apply some pressure and it will stay there. Uh, when it gets hot, it will it will uh, get stuck. I mean, it will 
faster and even better. Make sure it's covering all of the top of the surface of, of the DC-DC converter. So why I only apply on these four is because the other four DC-DC converters are actually getting enough cooling because they are so close to the fan. Uh, or probably because they are closer to the fan, I don't know. Uh, okay, so now the board is, is finished. We have new heat sinks on uh, those four DC-DC converters. We have applied a new thermal paste that has a, has a better brand. Uh, and we will now put on a new fan and we'll put everything back together. Uh, let me put the new fan back first. Uh, I'm using a Noctua Industrial PPC. Uh, it's called the model is NFA14 Industrial PPC, uh, PPC 3000. 3000 is actually the speed also, the maximum speed. So it has a, a rotation speed of up to 3000 RPM, which is very good for a 140 millimeter fan. Okay, let's see. Open it. Looks like this in the box. It's fastened on the back of this. this. We don't need the screws that comes with this fan. We have already have the ones that came with the miner. Uh, one of the sides shows the, the airflow direction with an arrow. So where you have the label industrial PPC is where the air will go. <laughs> uh, it's probably easy if you look on the arrow and you will understand. The direction of the fan is like this, and the direction of the air is like that. So let's put, put it, it makes more sense to put it like this. So the air will go in through the grill and then out uh, on the back side of it. Uh, the good thing with this is that if you wrap the cable around like this, it will be just enough to connect it if you put it like this. You see the connector is in the bottom left corner and putting it like this will make it perfect fit. Okay, let me just leave it like that and take the grill because you have to remember these, so these screws are also holding this one in place. So first through, through that one, then through this hole and then find the correct corner and here is the T20 uh, yeah Torx 20 this one is getting tired now I will first put all of them in place before I fasten it tightly It's fastened uh, on the inside it looks like this and now as I mentioned it, the cable is just enough to connect in the socket okay there you can see Perfect, so now let's put the rest back in place. Uh, by the way, once you've connected this one, you can't open it more than something like this because the cable could, could uh, take damage otherwise. Where is it? Here we have. Okay, so the V-shape is supposed to be away from the, away from the fan. So 
in this case or in this situation it becomes like this now uh, there's no way to tell if this is the correct position you will have to just put it somewhere on the on top of the ASIC chip and once you put this one back in place you will understand if it's correct or not once again this one as you noticed is, is difficult because it's not getting stuck on the on the metal so what I can do is instead to put it first on on the DC DC converters do that with this as well And then you can try to put this in place carefully. It's only supposed to be, uh, I mean, it's only possible to put it in one direction because there are two small screws that are supposed to be aligned with the holes. I will show you once I put this back. And this is, this is a bit of a tricky part of, of the mounting. Especially when those thermal pass doesn't want to stay put. Okay, something like something like that is. Push the hole heats into the left. Okay, so now I can see the, the screw holes in all three positions. So I will just put each screw in place, but I will not fasten it now. I will just first make sure it's aligned properly. I'll make a separate video on how to fix uh, the problem when one of these have fallen off the, um, the mounting of the heatsink. Uh, once again, I'm just putting them in place. And then I will check everything looks okay before I fasten it tightly. Actually, this one I think I will have to put something to make it more tight. I will show you. Uh, Many of them have the same issue. Okay, so now I'm fastening all of them all the way. And just making sure the thermal pads are in place because it's important that the pressure on the heatsink is, is enough. I think this is enough. I can try by pushing the, the metal down. If I get any spacing at all, uh, I should apply some more pressure by using something like this. But uh, in this case, it, it's, uh, it feels good enough. Okay, so heatsink is in place. Separate copper heat sinks are in place. New thermal paste new fan i think we are good to go so just wrap it together again and uh, put this one back on actually the first video i did i put this in the wrong direction so be sure to to make sure that these connectors are of course the one that should be on this side where you have the cut out from from the metal so be sure to put it in the correct direction Okay, 
Okay, everything is back in place. So I'll now connect it and see that everything works fine. This should uh, make the temperature go down at least by 10 or 15 degrees Celsius. So um, good luck.